Robert. Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning. And today my guest is Jean Do Mazarero, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in Montpelier, France. And we're going to continue in a series of conversations we're having about the influence on Francois del Sartre uh, on F. Matthias Alexander and the Alexander Technique. And the, our topic for today's show, um, which Jean Doe might want to modify, but I'll just throw it out there. Um, the question, was F.M. Alexander the first, first Alexander Technique teacher, or was he the best packager of Del Sartre's ideas, or both? Uh, Jean Doe, welcome to the show. Yes, welcome. Thank you very much for having me here. Well, it's 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 been a real pleasure talking to you about this, and there's been quite a bit of uh, reaction to our two previous uh, uh, podcasts. So I think this is kind of an interesting question. I mean, you raised earlier on the, the what seems pretty certain to have been a strong influence of Del Sartre's ideas on Alexander's own uh, story and on his writings as well yeah. and um, and so that that series of questions I just posed occurred to me after listening to the second of our podcast last time uh, is there a way you could answer that question in under 20 minutes <laughs> 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 yes, because I can. I, I think I can frame a very, very quick answer, okay. and then I will. If you let me, I will explain a bit more why there is this uh, this two head answer. Okay, okay sure. So, um, was he the most effective promoter of Del Sartre's ideas? Yes, for sure. Well, mm -hmm. for sure, for what I've read, for the extensive study as I've had of the Del Sartre system um, history in time, it is quite clear that the young Alexander was the most intelligent promoter of Del Sartre's work. Mm -hmm. what, what, has, what it means is that it, it's the only one I found to really understand and continue the teaching of conscious guidance. Mm -hmm. Because the Del Sartre system has been promoted everywhere, but uh, it's only in Tasmania that uh, the teaching of conscious guidance, that is the teaching of concerted activity with verbal instruction, the promoting of the autonomy of the pupil has, re has, been re has reached really its highest point. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about the young Alexander here. Mm -hmm. But my answer is not complete because also Alexander is, uh, to me, in my eyes, the first real uh, modern Alexander teacher. And that is after 1925. He became uh, the teacher of the Alexander Technique as you know it, which is the introduced hands-on work, mm -hmm. uh, which is a sort of conditioning through correct sensation, where in fact the orders, the, the, the verbal instruction, have become uh, like a trigger of a subconscious representation of good use, which is that the, the pupil experience uh, a different use that is, in fact, uh, um, brought to him by the hands of the teacher, and the verbal orders are triggers of that use. Right. And, but um, before he arrived at that hands-on process of teaching, from what you know, was he teaching... It sounds from what you we talked about earlier, he was basically teaching Del Sartre's ideas, but not including the illustrations that Del Sartre created. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And, and could you say a, a word or two about the role of those illustrations? I know we covered it before, but I think it would be worth describing again. Yes, and it will help understand the difference between conscious guidance and the, the new technique with the hands on. Yes, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, first of all, it's necessary to understand the aim of Del Sartre, because the aim of Del Sartre is very different from the aim of the older Alexander. At first, Del Sartre is a teacher of the heart. 
Mm-hmm. He's, he's a teacher of art to singers and actors. And so his, uh, his idea is to help people to express on stage mental phenomena, which, we, which are sensations and emotions. It's very difficult, really, to, in fact, project sensations and emotions that you are playing. Mm-hmm. And so Del Sartre recognized that uh, the play at his time was very dry or very, um, um, I, I would call it, not um, impulsive, not real. It was fake, sort of. And that so, was sort of that was mid nineteenth century France, right? Yes, yeah. early, early, early nineteenth century, right? France, mm-hmm. France, and the States too, because the the American were the first one, and 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 really they were the best uh, supporters of Del Sartre at mm-hmm. the time, you know. Mm-hmm. So what he wa- what he found is that in order to express mental mental phenomena as emotions or sensation on stage, so that the pl- the public would get the the meaning, the will get the situation the actor was trying to portray, he found that he had to uh, guide them and help them to use conscious guidance of the mind and will. You have to understand that at first, conscious guidance is not conscious guidance of the of the physical self. Mm-hmm. For Del Sartre, it, is, it has no meaning to think of the guidance of the physical self. For him, the physical self is just the uh, the instrument of uh, mind and the instrument of of will. Mm-hmm. So it would reach uh, body language. It will reach voice, which is another part of uh, of the body production, you know. Mm-hmm. And in order to reach that, all the parts had to be organized as a whole, according to a reason plan. That's that's the idea. And mm-hmm. so the we are, we are talking about the tableau, which we the diagrams or the images that uh, Del Sartre was uh, uh, producing, and he was giving these different images to the student. It's, it was a psychophysical training of the mind and will to free the path of expression, mm-hmm. and um, this came through. Um, Mental behavior, attention, memory, reasoning had to be improved because there was a poor direction of these aspects of the uh, control of the actor. And because of that, and only because of it, there was a poor play of the part of the physical body. And did, so, did Del Sartre use these images in combination with other uh, methods like verbal instructions or hands-on or anything like that? Well, the, the tableau or the, what we call the gestures, which are in fact uh, an image where, this, where you see the relationships between the different part of the torso and the different part of the torso and the head. This was, in fact, a way to explain verbal instructions. Ah, but, okay. Yes, okay, yeah. it, was, it was a combined system where to get the understanding of the instruction, you needed to look at the diagrams. At the, because otherwise you wouldn't have known what the instruction meant because they were different from your habits. So right. at right. the time, um, I could find no clue, no idea, no proof anywhere that any of uh, Del Sartre teachers or himself ever manipulated anyone. It was absolutely not part of the system. Mm -hmm. In order to understand the instructions, the pupil had to watch the the tableau, had to watch the image. And then when the, uh, uh, this was done, you have to understand that there was not one image or one set of instructions. It was because they were, they were not looking for the correct use of the part, as we would say today. No, no, no. They were trying to find freedom 
between the parts according to certain laws. So Delsart would give more than one uh, picture, more than one set of instruction. And so with this instruction and the two diagrams, the pupil would go in front of mirrors and it would, in fact, direct, well, which means repeat the instructions by heart, you know, mm -hmm. and he would project the instruction to the different parts of his reflection, which means that to project, you, you, in fact, it's a, a, a problem of practical will. You have to have one, the top of the top part of the torso to be uh, backward. You have to be the, the second part of the torso has to be antagonistic to the first one. The third part of the torso has to be antagonistic to the second and the fourth has to be an antagonistic with the third. And you have to relate that and you have to present not only this as a, as a statue. No, the idea was to have a fluid movement from that in fact, whole set of relations between the parts to another set of whole relations. So the, the fluidity, the, uh, the passage was more important than the, uh, the impersonation of the statue. So he was teaching movement. He was teaching movements. Now, did the, the, Alexander have any access to either these illustrations or to whatever Del Sartre's verbal instructions were? Well, I, I must tell you, you are changing subject now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, it's okay. I will, I will answer this. Yeah. You have, well, for the moment, all this is conjecture because my understanding of the situation is through studying the writings of both men mm -hmm. of and the fact that I found that Alexander lived very near uh, uh, Mr. Delsart's brother, Camille Delsart, in Tasmania. Mm -hmm. So we know one thing for sure is that Mr. Camille Delsart, the, the younger brother, left France in, in 1857. Mm -hmm. So we are quite sure that he, he brought with him the Delsart system at this age at this time and not later. This is very important because Mr. François Delsart, the, uh, the founder of the Delsart system, well, in France, he changed his mind. He started to refuse to teach the gestural training after his brother left. Hmm. So his bro Camille, uh, when he, when he um, emigrated to Tasmania, he had the 1857 system, yeah? And what, what we are quite sure is that um, he was not following the, the full Delsart uh, theoretical system. And uh, he was more into, well, using a much simpler system where instead of this passage from one uh, tableau, one, what would you call representation or conception of the whole movement to another and to another and to another in order to, to produce a fantastic um, and lifelike representation of emotion or sensation, it was much, it was much simpler. It was just, in fact, uh, passing from the wrong use of the parts to the correct use of the mechanism of, and of the torso and the head. So oh, okay. he didn't need as many pictures as his brother would have. And, and also, there is some, something that is quite clear, is that Delsa, the Francois, the, 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 the older brother, the creator, he was a fantastic draw, uh, the drawing person. He, mm -hmm. he could, uh, could take a piece of paper and draw, and draw yourself or draw uh, you in a different move mm -hmm. as you are, you know, mm -hmm. while this is uh, a, a skill that you have to, to train for years and years and years. And, uh, um, well, I don't imagine that uh, Camille's little brother uh, did all that because mm -hmm. he was just uh, a teacher of, uh, th of singing. He was just a guy that was renowned for curing voice problems. Mm -hmm. And we know for sure, sh I, I know that we don't have any direct connection between Alexander and Camille. They, they didn't 
as far as we know, they didn't as far meet. As I know, no. But on the other hand, Alexander certainly spent time with a lot of Camille's students. Yes. And he, at some point, I think around 1896 or so, uh, uh, Put him put himself out as a teacher of the Del Sart method. He ex- explicitly says that in his advertising, right? Yeah, he should have he should have written uh, a teacher of the Camille Del Sart system. Well, because uh, I, I imagine that nicety wasn't <laughs> utmost in his mind. But yeah, as yeah. you said, he he wouldn't have said that. Uh, I believe it was in Melbourne that he that he yeah. put that out. He would not have done that given that all his friends and fellow actors knew about the Del Sart method if he himself didn't have some training or background in it, right? That I mean, he obvious. would not have called himself, it would have been a foolish move to call himself a Del Sart teacher if he didn't actually have some exposure to Del Sart's ideas. That's my idea. Yeah. It's, uh, and, it's and, obvious. And just... Um, I'd like to keep this conversation a bit on the short side, but I do want to ask you this. Um, do, would it be at all reasonable to suggest that when Alexander himself started teaching other people, that since he didn't have these images, they they weren't uh-huh. available to him, that he his he did, he came up with what we what we now call alexander technique directions as yeah. a way around that problem yeah i think that your idea is uh, is is really sound because uh, when i studied uh, the instructions i found that uh, uh, despite everything he says they are not means to achieve something mm-hmm. they are the result they are exactly like the diagram. They are the result that you should see in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So yes, I really do think that you are correct. That uh, Alexander's instruction, instead of being as Del Sartre's instruction, the means to achieve uh, a conscious guidance of the practical will, so that you can set each parts relative to the other in a correct organization of the whole. They were like, well, the the diagram. They are in fact a representation of what you want. They are the end. Right. And yeah. would it also be fair to say that his directions were not totally satisfactory in the sense that a lot of people really couldn't master them properly? They were just too long, too complex, several sentences worth. And that emerging out of his frustration with them came hands on work? Well, I, I will answer this, but very slowly, because uh, everything is not correct. Well, okay. in my idea. Okay? Uh-huh. okay. You have to understand that Alexander, um, in fact, transformed the use of instructions, which, which were at first the means of the movement, They were the explanation of how you should move one part in what direction relative to what. Yeah, Mm -hmm. they were geometrical instructions and it transformed them into the result, which is completely different. Mm -hmm. So um, the insatisfaction he found with uh, these instructions is uh, like normal. Because mm-hmm. they are not the right tools. He, I say, I don't know what happened, but he mistook the means for the end here. It's very strange that this could happen, as he's always talking about the danger of making this mistake. But it's quite clear, because nowadays, I, in fact, decided to go back to the early Alexander technique. I wanted to find how Alexander could, in fact, work with himself alone without any outside help and change his use, change his habit of mind and his habit of will. Mm -hmm. And And I had, in fact, to, in fact see the instruction he was using as what they are, which are ends. They are not the means. 
You know, if you, for example, I will give an example so that this becomes a bit more clear. Mm -hmm. You have heard the expression lengthening and widening the back. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a result. Right. This does, it does not give you any sort of indication of the movement of the different parts of the torso that are necessary for the spine to, and the torso to lengthen and to widen. You know, the, right. it's only through maybe uh, the administration of someone, the hands-on of someone, that maybe these words could trigger the right thing, but, but they are not means. You understand? It's a very yes. different. Oh, I, to... I understand. So, yeah. but, but so yeah. it sounds like his verbal instructions were actually descriptions of what he wanted to have wanted to happen. In yeah. a, in a, but they were not actually ways to make it happen. Exactly. And so, when students would use them, they would become frustrated. I would imagine. Um, yeah. And. At some point, it seems as though, I, I, according to Frank Pierce Jones, it was around 1914, but at some point, he basically, it almost sounds like he kind of gave up on peer directions and said, I'm going to get it, get it for them, basically That's by using my hands to guide them. That's my impression. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, I think, might, <clears throat> might be a good place to bring this conversation to an end and follow up on it with questions about what are the implications for today's teaching and so on. But, that, but the big picture, I hadn't actually, I had always felt that Alexander's early directions, at least the ones I know about, were flawed mainly because they were so complex, too much to process in the moment. But I'm getting from you that there's an even more fundamental flaw, which is that they aren't actually directions. They're more, um, yeah. yeah, they're more, this, uh, what I, what I want to have happen, but not any way to actually get to it. Exactly. Yeah. But... May I say something? Just one last thing, because sure. uh, um, we have we don't have to belittle the man, because in fact uh, I said that he maybe made a mistake about the the way he worded the instruction mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. a representation of what mm -hmm. he wanted instead of the means. Yes, but as a translator of Alexander, and uh, I can tell you something: is that his books are a gold mine. Because behind the instructions, you get the books, and mm -hmm. in the books, you get, well, nearly all the means you need in order to fulfill the end that he's proposing. And it's very important to, um, that, that, that he left us the, the end result we want. You understand? Sure, he left us absolutely. the end result we want. Well, for uh, up up to us to try and understand what he meant, because it's not that that straightforward. But also, there are so many biomechanical in, uh, indications in his in his different books right, that right. it's possible to reconstruct the means to achieve the end he's proposing to us. So okay. yeah, he, no, I I totally agree. I'm, I do he gave not, us he gave us a lot. You he know? gave Without us him. There, there would be no technique. There would be no initial technique. There would be no understanding of the Del Sart system either. Right. No, I totally I, I totally agree with that. Well, let's let's bring this conversation to a close, and then we're going to do some more. Um, my guest today has been uh, Jean Doe. Um, let me get my little cheat, Jean Doe Massoero, a Massoero, an Alexander Technique teacher in Montpellier, France. And um, Jean Doe, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>